prayer meeting. And um, I think before we go any further, let's close our eyes and let's invite our Heavenly Father to guide us as we study His Word again. Our gracious Father in Heaven, we are living in a time period of this world where the noise of the world confuses us. People are telling us what to do and we have two camps, those in favour and those not. And yet we realise that being on planet Earth, we need to be able to discern between what is right and wrong. But in order to do that correctly, gracious Father, we need you, you, we need you to guide us. Your word counsels us that one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is to be able to discern spirits, to discern between what is good and what is bad. So we do ask, please, gracious Holy Spirit, that you will help us to long for that gift so that we can truly be effective in the decisions that we are making. And tonight, gracious Father, I do ask that each person that is watching with me, that you'll take them in the palm of your hand and that you will nurture them and look after them. As your word counsels me, you will do. Then we are asking, gracious Father, that you will forgive us of our sins and heal us of our diseases and that through Christ you will redeem us to yourself and that when Jesus comes to fetch us, we'll be ready to meet him. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friends, I'd like you to go with me to the book of Proverbs. And I think that you would have gathered from the prayer that I was wondering how do you distinguish when you look at the social media and you see all the... Um, decisions that you have to make as a result and you are wondering which camp is right. Both have defended the point of view and you're wondering what must I do? Now dear friends as I've mentioned so many times God's word counsels me very clearly in, Deut in um, Revelation chapter 8 that we are going to come to the rivers of Mara the rivers that are going to be bitter. And at those rivers we can either murmur, complain about the confusion or the bad state we find ourselves in, or we can, like Moses did, come to you and ask you for wisdom. I want you to go with me to Proverbs chapter 1. And I'm going to be reading from verse 1 on, and then, of course, highlighting verse 7. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. The purpose of these Proverbs are for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discerning to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance. The signs and riddles of the wise the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now, dear friends, I was just wondering, as I said, how do you go about discerning between what is right and wrong? Now, before we go any further, I do think I need to give you a bit of clarity as to the Hebrew mind and the understanding of, of the words for example wisdom and then what they perceive it to be understanding what they understand their thoughts are of that and of course they it does come to knowledge also but that's almost a combination of the first two 
In the Hebrew mind, if you had to go and look at the way it originally was portrayed, the word wisdom was, if it was drawn in a, a picture form, it would have been a picture of a wall. A wall that basically separated two sides. On the one side, you would either have, have an a, um, evil and on the other side, you will have good. So wisdom, basically in the Hebrew mind, would be to, to be able to separate or divide or draw a division between what is right and what is wrong. Okay, that is what wisdom is. And according to Proverbs, according to Job, wisdom is gained when you have a fear of the Lord. Now, a fear of the Lord is not really being afraid, but basically approaching God and seeking His counsel in whatever you are doing. So I want you to see something here with me, that wisdom is crucial and it's what we need. And yet we read here in Proverbs chapter 1 that fools despise wisdom. Now, dear friends, I hope those of you that are watching with me do not want to be put under that category, but have a longing to know or to be able to distinguish between what is right and what is wrong. And to, to take this a little bit further, I'm going to come to understanding, etc. But I want to take you to 1 Kings where we find out in 1 Kings chapter 3 that Solomon, and again obviously that was the Proverbs of Solomon, that right in the beginning when he was still a young man, God approached him in a dream and asked him, what do you want from me? One thing, what do you want from me? And it's interesting that Solomon started off by saying to God in verse 7, Now Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But then he says this, But I'm only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. Then his request, verse 9. So give your servant a, and then the word there is discerning, a discerning heart to govern your people. And then he says, and to distinguish between what is right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? So I want you to notice here two, two words, discerning, to be able to distinguish between right and wrong, and then the word, as it says there, um, sorry, dear friends, let me say, so to give your, your servant a discerning heart to discern, to govern your people and to distinguish. So the other word is distinguish between what is right and wrong. And in actual fact, the, the discerning um, spirit there, um, discerning heart, I want you to understand something here, that that is something that God gives on request. And I want you to jump over with me to 1 Corinthians 12. And we're going to look at verse 10. So will you please go with me? to 1 Corinthians 12, and we are going to look together at verse 10. Well, maybe I should jump right back to verse 7. Okay, let's do that. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. That means for the edification of the church, for the upbuilding or the nurturing of the church. In one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge, by means of the same Spirit, 
Verse 9, to another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. Verse 10, to another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. And then it says this, to another, distinguishing between spirits. Now I want you to see and recognize here that these are gifts that we can ask for. Linked to this, I want you to go with me to the book of James. Now James says, and I want you to see this. He says there in verse 5, this is James chapter 1 verse 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, now remember again the Hebrew mind, wisdom means to be able to separate right from wrong, evil from good. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all that they do. So I want you to see, we've just looked at two things here. We've seen that in order to gain wisdom or to be able to distinguish between right and wrong, it is a gift from God to us, which God says that He will make available to us on request and that we must recognize that the Spirit of God is there to assist us in having this wisdom as the word counsels us very clearly that the word that the Spirit of God was given to be our counselor to be able to give to us truth you understand what is right so I want you just to see this that in the world we are living, God hasn't gone ahead and just given us um, directions without us asking for it. In actual fact, in the book of Isaiah, we are counseled very clearly that when we come to the T-junctions of life, when we come to those places where we need to be able to distinguish between which direction to go, what is right and what is wrong, that at those times when we cry out, God will hear our request and he will, he will give us insight so that we will be able to make a wise choice in what we are going to do. Do you understand? And we desperately need this in the world that we are living in now. I find a lot of people find themselves in places where they have to make decisions and normally what we do is we will go to people to find out. Now the sad thing about this is that we, we tend to feel that the majority rules or that the majority is right. No dear friends, this is not what you are to do when you consider the direction you are to take. In actual fact, Isaiah chapter 8 says, and would you go there with me to Isaiah chapter 8? And I want you to look with me what the counsel of Isaiah is. In actual fact, God is speaking through Isaiah. And in Isaiah chapter 8, have you found it yet? Isaiah chapter 8. The counsel is given there in verse 19. When someone tells you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter. So you see the, the point that Isaiah is bringing out. When we are counseled to go to, to worldly knowledge, to go to the sources of wisdom on earth, we should rather do what he says. Should a, not a people, especially God's people, inquire of their God. 
Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? Cons con consult God's, sorry, yes, consult God's instruction and the testimony of warning. If anyone does not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. So I want you to understand again that majority does not rule. God rules. And if you really want to know what is right, go to God who, who, who knows the difference between right and wrong. And ask him for wisdom. But then I want you to understand that the next word that pops up there when we read in Proverbs chapter 1 that a fool despises wisdom it then goes on to say and instruction and when I look at this the the word instruction here is basically also the word understanding but wisdom and understanding are not the same thing in actual fact, understanding in the Hebrew mind means that now that you've distinguished between right and wrong, you need instruction as to how to go about doing what you've decided to do, which is right. You know, what is the right thing? How to go about doing it? So the word understanding in the Hebrew mind is more given in the, the, the sense that you need a blueprint. You need guidance um, as to how to build. You need a plan. And so understanding is basically knowing the journey, discerning the journey, having the information you need to take the steps to go in the right direction to achieve or get the result that you're looking for. Do you understand? The thought that comes to my mind here is that story, and I'd like you again to jump with me to um, Matthew chapter 7. He talks there about a wise person, and I want you to look at verse 24. Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds. Now I want you to notice, so here we're given the word wise in the understanding of how we look at it when it comes to the, the westernized concept of looking at wisdom. But the key word here is, is a wise man who builds his house on the rock. So this concept of building is actually the, 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 the understanding part. How should I go about building what I'm doing? Of course, the foundation that you should build on is Jesus Christ. But you need insight to do that. I used to be in the construction business and especially in the construction of entertainment venues, such basically with thatched roofs. And normally I would come to a person's home who would want to have an entertainment um, thatch in their home. And so what I would do is I would go and I would find out the area. I would look at if there's a slope in the ground or what it's all about. I will then plan. Now, although I knew and had the wisdom to be able to know, you know, what how properly to build, I still needed understanding to make sure that I put what I knew together. And so wisdom and understanding is very, very important, especially when we come to trying to do what is right. And I would like you to jump over to, to Job with me again. And I want you to look at Job chapter 28. And I want you to see what Job says regarding um, what wisdom and understanding is. So in Job chapter 28, and we're going to look at verse 28. 
Job counsels us the fear of the Lord, which is again something that Solomon refers to. The fear of the Lord is, that is wisdom. So to go to God instead of to anybody else is the wisest choice. In actual fact, James distinguishes between the wisdom of the world and the wisdom that is from God, from heaven. So we need to be very careful that we do not run to the learned people of the world like Pharaoh did. He ran to, like Nebuchadnezzar did, he ran to them, but they were restricted when it came to really knowing what to do. And so we find that the best person to go to, and in actual fact, Proverbs teaches me that in the beginning, wisdom was with God. So true wisdom, the, this, this ability to be able to distinguish between right and wrong, is something that God alone can give us. But he promises that if we lack wisdom he, and we go to him, he will give without reservation. Do you understand? But once you've gone to God and you've asked him for guidance, don't be double-minded about if what he's given you is correct. Do what he says. That's the wise man who builds his house on the rock. And the interesting thing is when you do that, when the storms come up and the wind blows and the rain falls, your house will not crash. Okay, so I want you to see, and you'll see, there is a reason why I'm looking at it. So we have two words here. We have wisdom, which is the separation of right and wrong, the distinguishing to be able to discern between which is right and wrong. But then understanding is that ability to be able to not only know the difference, but how to pursue or how to go in the direction once you know what is right, how to do that. But I want you to also recognize that you need, and the next word in the Hebrew mind is we have wisdom and understanding, but the next word is knowledge. But knowledge is a combination of wisdom and understanding. Knowledge in actual fact, if you looked at it the way in which it was originally portrayed, it would have been like a door. And the, why I want you to look at this word with me regarding knowledge, knowledge would have been portrayed as an eye. And an eye that, that move, is moving, that is moving from left to right, or in actual fact is, is studying something. Um, knowledge is gained when you look at the information given to you, you study into it, and you gain knowledge. You, you, in actual fact, knowledge is the, the entrance, the doorway into, into doing the right thing. So I want you to notice why I'm, I'm emphasizing this, is that when you go to God for wisdom and you want to know what to do, the important thing is to take time to study and look at what, what God is presenting in his word. And then when you've studied that and you've looked at that and your eyes have gone up and down on it, then you will have knowledge as to what, how to go, the entrance portal which, which you need to take. Now, why am I sharing all of this with you tonight? As I mentioned to you earlier on, the problem with people nowadays is that we, we don't know who to turn to or who to trust or who to believe, particularly when it comes to knowing the decisions that we are to make. And I do believe, dear friends, that there isn't a one shoe that fits all or one sock that fits all. There isn't a one solution to the problem. God has got a diverse um, amount of solutions to any particular problem. Do you understand? And it is important for you to be able to, or to go to God 
When you lack wisdom, ask him. And please, dear friends, I want you to remember that that the answer given to you might be uniquely just for you. And, you know, to bring this point across, I'd like to use the story of Naaman again. Where Naaman goes to Elisha and tells, you know, according to his servant, Elisha was a man of God. And so he went to this man of God. Elisha doesn't even come out to meet him. He just tells him. Now notice this. this Naaman has leprosy. He tells him to go down to the river Jordan and then to dunk himself seven times, to be baptized seven times in the water, to submerge seven times. Now that is a strange, um, how can I say, guidance given. But yet that is what was given to Naaman. Now he questioned it. He questioned the fact that they had better rivers where he, he stayed. He questioned the fact that he had to go and do this. He questioned the fact that um, Elisha had not come out to meet him. Now remember, James says that when you ask for wisdom, don't doubt about it. So finally, Naaman's servants convince him that he's come all this way. He might as well just go and try it out. And the, the, the interesting thing about the story is that he goes into the River Jordan, he submerges himself seven times, and his leprosy is gone. Now I'm going to ask you this, dear friends. Lots of people in the life of Christ came to him with leprosy. We know in fact of ten who come to him. With leprosy and only nine uh, one returns to say thank you but the interesting thing is that christ didn't say to them there well you know remember elisha said that you must go down to the river jordan and then you know dunk yourself seven times and then you'll be free of leprosy no that isn't what what happens here christ just heals him in another way so the the common factor here is god God is the one, the God of creation, the God of salvation is the one that you need to go to when you are needing to know what to do. And dear friends, again, when you have wisdom and understanding, distinguishing between right and wrong, and to be able to construct something, putting something together, you need to take the time to really study and find out. Now, let's go back in closing to the book of Proverbs chapter 1. And Proverbs chapter 1 says, verse 2, that the objective of Proverbs, the objective of instruction is for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair. So dear friends, I want you to understand that we desperately need to be able to do what is right and just and fair. But what is right in one person's eyes is not right in another person's eyes. And the word counsels me very clearly that there are those who are going to take what is right and make it wrong, and they're going to take what is wrong and make it right. We have to be very careful about that. So who do we go to in order to know what is right? We go to God. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And then as it says there in Job 28 verse 28, that to shun evil, that is to, to, to not do unrighteousness, but to do righteousness, that is understanding. Okay, so one of the thoughts that really disturbed me, and it's a thought found in the writings of Ellen White, where she actually counseled the early church right in the beginning. She said that if the church had searched the word of God in order to find out his will, then she would not have been instructed to write all the information she gave to us. Because everything that, that she had to write down almost spoon feed us was actually found in the Word. So what I'm actually trying to say to you, dear friends, you know, we are living in a world that is a fast food world. We just want solutions quickly. We live with a lotto mentality. We don't want to work for something. 
But I want you to understand that when it comes to these last days and the things and decisions that you have to make, please take the time to do three things. To go to God and ask Him for wisdom and remember He gives it to you. Secondly, to, to allow Him to give you the plan, the, the method of construction. So that when you build, you are building according to his blueprint. And I always think of Noah. Noah built the ark according to the blueprint. And that is why it survived the storm. Okay. Now those two factors together, when you are doing it, don't be impatient or in a rush. Study, study, study until there is clear clarity as to the direction that you know which door you need to go through.